The depths of the ocean are some of the most alien regions on Earth to us land lovers, full of countless known and even more unknown creatures suspended in a region of limited to no sunlight. And off the coast of California, a small submersible would be briefly brought face to face with a giant from the deep, never to be seen again. Welcome to Cryptid Corner, the series all things cryptids, and today we are going to look into a Deep Star 4000 fish. The Deep Star 4000 is a submersible built in 1965 and was designed for dives as low as 4000 feet in depth, as hinted by its name, and was designed for three man crews. And I also just love how this thing looks. In June of 1966, pilot Joe Thompson, along with marine biologist and oceanographer Gene LaFond, and instrumentation engineer Dale Hood, would be tasked with a 4,000 foot dive off of the coast of San Diego to install some hydrographical instruments at the bottom of the sea. During the dive, Thompson and possibly LaFond would witness something truly shocking. Looking outside of the window, Thompson would spot a gargantuan fish with eyes the size of dinner plates. Using the equipment that they were laying for comparison, Thompson estimated that this fish had to be between 25 and 40 feet in length and be about 5 to 6 feet in width, humbling the man within his 18-foot long submersible. The fish was dark in coloration with light gray tipped fins, and to him resembled a sea bass in body shape with two foot long pectoral fins and a rounded yet serrated tail fin which was about four to five feet in height and a tail which resembled that of a coelacanth which was something that thompson makes great note of the fish was scaly with the largest scales in the front of the fish's body said to be the size of coffee cups this encounter lasted only eight seconds, with the fish swimming by and kicking up silt from the seafloor and swimming off into the dark deep ocean. The mechanical arm of the Deep Star 4000 was occupied, so they could not pursue the giant fish, and no one was able to pull out a camera in time. An audio log of the sighting has been recorded allegedly, although to my knowledge it has yet to be released. Thompson and LaFond would keep their sightings to themselves, but in 1967, they would come forward about the sighting, telling journalists as well as marine writer and cryptozoologist Gardner Soule about the encounter at the bottom of the ocean. The case of the Deep Star 4000 fish has left many puzzled as to the identity of this mysterious fish, including curious oceanographers and marine biologists like Willard Bascom and John D. Isaacs. The two would team up and would send cameras off the coast of Baja California, not far from the initial encounter, to a depth of about 6,000 feet, bringing back photos of what they thought to be 25-foot-long Greenland sharks. These sharks would be later identified as Pacific sleeper sharks, close relatives to Greenland sharks that tended to clock in at about 12 feet in length, although it is thought that they are capable of reaching the 25-foot threshold. Due to this, it became a lead theory for a while that the Deep Star 4000 fish was one of these sharks, but people had problems with this theory, including Thompson and LaFond themselves. For starters, the shape, general appearance, and size of the sharks doesn't match with the Deep Star fish at all, with Thompson clearly recalling a scaled sea bass looking thing and not a giant shark, whose distinct body shape would have been noted. Additionally, these sharks were incredibly common in the area, meaning the report would have been of a Deep Star 4000 shiver. And one of the most noteworthy details, the dinner plate-sized eye, would not even be possible, as Pacific sleeper sharks have incredibly small eyes, as sharks in general tend to have just small eyes. As per Thompson's original theory, based on the fish's appearance, there could have been a chance that this fish spotted was a colossal sea bass. This would be a huge step up from the largest species of sea bass, the fittingly named giant sea bass, which at max clocked in at about 7 feet in length. Interestingly, this same fish wasn't caught too terribly far off from San Diego in 1968, meaning the largest sea bass in the world probably run into the Deep Star 4000 a time or two. 
Another problem with this being a super giant sea bass is that they tend to be found at a max of about 150 feet in depth from what I found, which is 3,850 feet off. Although other sea bass species, such as the Chilean sea bass, have adapted to far deeper waters and have grown longer than the giant sea bass at about 7.5 feet in length, albeit way more slim. Some have theorized that due to its appearance, the Deep Star 4000 fish was a relative of the Yokozuna slickhead, which is the current largest bony fish to be restricted to the deep ocean. These slickheads can reach lengths of about 8.2 feet in length and are thought to grow far larger. Additionally, many details like the body shape and the large eyes do seem to compare to the deep star fish. The sail isn't the best match for the fish. However, it wouldn't make sense if it, it was a colossal relative and not exactly a giant slickhead. I personally feel like no currently known fish can match this gargantuan creature. Whatever it is, it is something entirely new, but it's probably related to other fish. In regards to the idea that this is a hoax, I personally don't think this to be the case, as Thompson and LaFond are well-experienced and respected figures in their fields, with Thompson revolutionizing underwater photography and equipment design, and LaFond working on one of the first modern textbooks on oceanography, acted as a scientific consultant during Operation Crossroads at Bikini Atoll, which is how we got Spongebob, and even has a medal named after him. The two being hesitant on coming out about their story kind of adds legitimacy in my eyes as well. Interestingly, though, the Deep Star 4000 fish would not be the only fish spotted by Joe Thompson, or even by the Deep Star 4000 for that matter. In 1967, sometime after the dives in San Diego, Joe Thompson and the Deep Star 4000 would be brought to the Gulf of Mexico, and during a dive, Thompson would spot another odd fish, a giant Atlantic grenader, swimming alongside several smaller grenaders on the ocean floor. Grenaders, also known as rat tail fish, are deep sea fish that have big old heads and slender bodies, ending in a rat-like tail from which they get the rat tail name. The largest of the grenaders is the giant grenader, which can achieve lengths of 6 foot 11, but are limited to the northern Pacific. The grenader Thompson spotted was nearly 10 feet in length, by his estimate, which eclipses the known grenaders of the Atlantic, which have only been known to grow to about a few feet long and known rat tails as a whole for that matter. Thompson would tell Gardner Soul about this encounter along with the Deep Star 4000 fish, which tends to receive way more coverage, and I mean, you're probably more interested about a 40-foot-long superfish than a 10-foot-long fish that makes you uncomfortable when you Google what it is. I personally feel like this fish could be real as well, after all, the deep ocean is a wild place, so I could see a rat tail relative in size to their Pacific cousins dominating the continental slopes of the Gulf of Mexico. The Deep Star 4000 fish is such a fascinating glimpse into a world man never really sees, with Thompson and LaFond spotting a giant for a mere 8 seconds and never again. Although I feel like the whole 40-foot estimate might seem like a hell of a highball, but I definitely could see a large deep-sea fish living in the deep waters off of the coast of Southern California, putting the sleeper sharks to shame. The giant Atlantic Grenader also seems like a pretty plausible cryptid as well, even more plausible than the Deep Star 4000 fish in my opinion. Joe Thompson is one of the extremely few people who not only have spotted one cryptid, but two, and given how large and unexplored the ocean is, especially at this depth, and given his and LaFon's credentials, I feel like we are only one dive away from spotting these deep sea giants. Hopefully they haven't gone extinct since then. But with all of that being said, the Megalodon is dead as fuck. And that is going to do it for the Deep Star 4000 Fish and the bonus Giant Atlantic Grenader. 
which I didn't know about going into this. Uh, I also didn't really know much about the Deep Star 4000 fish. I just kind of knew that it was a deep sea fish encounter. So I decided to look into it and man, I really like this type of encounter where someone with really good credentials who has a lot of experience in the field of diving and submersibles and stuff like that spots something that no one else has seen. Very similar to the bathosphere fish. You know, I was kind of drawing a lot of parallels between this, you know, and William BB's dive where he saw a fish reportedly and like only he saw those fish. And but his credentials are so good that they even have taxonomic names and stuff like that. I did a video on those fish if you didn't know about that. So if you like this type of cryptid, go check out that video. That's a great video to go and watch. But I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you all like this topic. You know, I kind of just decided to finally look into it. And man, it's, it's a really cool. Just imagine being down there and seeing a fish larger than your whole craft. And like, and I mean, like, it, could he have misseen it? He could have. But I mean, Thompson kind of did a lot in underwater equipment and photography and stuff like that so i feel if anyone was to not miss sight it it'd probably be him and i also probably could have mentioned that this could have been a whale but then again whales tails aren't really coelacanth like most of the time but i did kind of think it could have been a sperm whale but what did you think about it make sure to comment down below uh, if you have any other suggestions on you know cryptids you, you want me to cover or any other idea really Make sure to shoot that down below. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you really want to be a G, you can become a member for me three dollars a month. And with that, I'm gonna head out. And if you're watching this on the day it comes out, happy Memorial Day. And I will see you in the next one.